hey thanks for watching my video if you like what you see hit the like button today I'm going to remove and rebalance my front wheel first thing we're going to do is loosen the 22 millimeter axle bolt on the right side of the motorcycle so I haven't ridden this bike a whole lot lately it kind of sits parked uh, I took it out for a ride and uh, at about a hundred I had a really bad shake in the front end and I was thinking that maybe the tire the front tire was flat spotted because it sat for so long so right now we're removing the 12 millimeter bolts that hold the caliper on so since I have all the tools I figured after the ride I came home and I pulled the front tire off and it was due for an oil change so I did that too that's another video you can watch um, but I found that my front tire was actually out of balance um, by, by an ounce so once I pulled all the weights off of it and spun balance give it a good computer balance it was off by an ounce so that definitely would have been a noticeable shake at high speed. So I'm not a huge fan of the tires that are on this bike. I'm running the Dunlop Road Smart 3s. They have been on this bike since the Road Smart 3s came out. Uh, not a big fan. So I just loosened the pinch bolts on the right side. Now I'm loosening the pinch bolts on the left side. And then we jump over to the uh, <clears throat> caliper on the left side, which is um, kind of the main caliper for your linked braking. This, this one, when you pull this one off, um, it's important that you inspect uh, everything that's going on with this one. When I did the left one, that caliper is just like any other caliper you might remove. Um, just pull it off, look at it, make sure that your brake pads are good, and, and that's all that really needs to be done. But on this side, the bolt that I'm pulling out right now is actually just a pin. Um, the brake caliper pivots on this pin right here. Uh, so it's important that whenever you're changing your tires or doing any maintenance to the front end, uh, that this caliper comes off and you inspect it, you clean it up, and you put a light coat of lube on it to make sure that it pivots and functions the way that it should. So this is a little bushing that rides inside the fork. Um, and there's bearings that are actually in there and uh, there's a seal there's an outer seal on both sides and then there's some roller bearings inside of it so it's it's a genius idea again if you have the bike apart to go ahead and service those bearings as well um, right now I just have a tool in the axle and I'm going to finish removing that axle bolt on the right side and then I'm going to pull the axle out while I lift up the wheel so now our wheel is off the bike um, always remember when you take your spacers out it's a good idea to put the right spacer on the right side the left spacer on the left side that way you don't get them mixed up when you're putting them back together and then like I was saying before, get in there and, and clean out um, the, the, the inside of these forks and stuff. The right side fork doesn't really need a whole lot of attention. Um, but this is a good time when you have the bike apart to go ahead and wipe everything down and, and get it clean. So I'm going to put some grease in these bearings. And I use Lubramatic Marine Grease. Sure, we're trying to kind of lube up these bearings, uh, but it is more important to keep dust, dirt, debris, and moisture out of the bearing. So, marine grease, if you watch some of my other videos, I'm always telling you, um, 
marine grease, if it's good enough to lube the bearings in your boat trailer, and you're dunking your boat trailer in and out of salt water, um, it's going to be good enough for the little bit of grease you're going to put on your motorcycle to protect it from dirt, debris, and moisture. So this little bushing, I've got the seals lubed up and I've got a little bit of grease inside the bearing. So we're going to push that little bushing in and now it'll be good for another few thousand miles until those tires are worn out and uh, I'll replace the or clean the grease out again and add some fresh grease. So at this point I've already balanced this tire and uh, we're good to go. So we're ready to put the bike back together again. And we're going to clean out these um, bearing seals, these wheel seals on the front. If you clean these every time you change a tire uh, and lube them with a, a light coat of marine grease again, uh, these seals will last you a long time, a long, long time. Uh, these seals that are on my bike, yes, they are 21 years old. I have owned this bike since new in 2000. So I'm going to put just a finger full of grease in that little ridge that runs inside that seal that seals it onto uh, the spacer. And then I'll just insert the spacer into that wheel. And I'm going to do the same over on the right side. Of course, I, I didn't move the camera, but you get the gist of it. So just a light coat of grease, clean off that spacer, and then the wheel's ready to go back into place. So with the axle, I've wiped the axle clean, and I'm going to put a light coat of grease on the axle. Remember, we're not lubing the axle. The, the wheel does not spin on the axle. The wheel spins on the bearing. The bearing rests on the axle. If you're looking at your axle and you have some rough marks, you have some burn marks on your axle, you probably need to dive into uh, the bearings and make sure your bearings are good. You probably have a bearing that needs to be replaced if it is wearing a mark on your axle. My axle's perfect. It has 54,000 miles on it, so my bearings are good. So while I was doing this job, there were these two hawks out in the field across the street from the house, and they were just flying around squawking at each other, so I just thought you might want to see what's going on outside. And back to the bike. So we've got the front wheel on, axles through the forks, we're just going to put the axle bolt into the axle and it's just going to be finger tight. We're not going to tighten this down. You might hear your buddies on one of those ignorant VFR forums, one of them keyboard jockeys um, tell you you need to jump up and down on the bike and this, that, and the other thing to align the front end when you're putting the axle in and the front wheel on. Um, but, you know, there's a reason why they're hiding behind the keyboard and they're not making their own via videos and placing on on YouTube. Um, it's because they just don't know any better. So you don't need to jump up and down on the front of the bike. Um, so I put grease in the the front caliper where that pivot pin is going to go. I put some grease in that hole and that's going to help when I slide this on to the brake rotor um, and then I put that uh, pivot pin into place it's going to allow that pivot pin to have some lubrication uh, and it's also going to help keep the moisture, dirt and debris from getting in between uh, that caliper bracket and the pivot pin 
and it, it'll just protect it a lot better until you do it again next time when you pull the front wheel off. So the top, the top bolt really doesn't need any love. It's just going to go um, into, through into the fork and mount to the other side of that upper bracket. Um, really the bottom one's the most important one because the caliper pivots on that bottom one. And if you keep it well lubed, you're not going to have any wear. My pin has almost no wear whatsoever after 21 years. And I would expect yours to be the same if you take care of your bike as I do. So make sure you torque these down. You can find torque specs in your manual. I don't give out torque specs. Um, you can also search the interwebs, find torque specs there. Back over to the right side. The right side caliper is just like every other bike you'll ever work on. No linked braking really. Just one brake line coming off uh, and then this one just mounts up, mounts, slides onto the, the rotor and then you just bolt it back into place. The hardest part is putting the caliper on without scratching the wheel. That's, that's what I always find. Nobody wants their wheel scratched up. Don't let don't let me be the judge of that though, because my wheels are scratched. I don't have a problem with having scratched wheels. It happens. I've, I've kind of been kicking around changing the wheel color, so these wheels might get powder coated. I'm gonna keep this bike for another 20 years. Or until the de these liberal Democrats that are destroying our world um, get rid of all the gasoline and we won't be able to do this hobby. So you see me spinning the wheel. So instead of jumping up and down on the front of the bike, spin your front wheel and grab a handful of brake and do that two or three times. And that will line up your front end. And then tighten down that 22 millimeter um, axle bolt until it stops and the axle starts spinning on the other side and then come over to the left side and you want to go ahead and uh, torque down the pinch bolts on the left side and the way I typically torque down my pinch bolts when I have two on a fork is I will do one and then I'll go do the other, and then I come back and do the first one, and then I go back and do the other, and then I come back and do the first one, and then I do the other. So I'm touching each pinch bolt three times. That way I know it's absolutely going to get the correct torque specs. Once your left side is torqued down, then you can come over to your axle bolt, and you can torque down your axle bolt. with your axle bolt torque down only then is when you want to torque down the right side so axle bolt gets torqued down first and then you torque down your right side and again torque down one pinch bolt then the other pinch bolt and the first pinch bolt then the next pinch bolt and that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching my video.